welcome all of you to this service for Pat Mosman. Thank you for being here. I know that many of you um, have traveled a distance. You came from, well, from Billings, but from other places as well. Thank you for being here. I want to remind you that we have a luncheon following the service. So we, on behalf of the family, want to invite all of you to that. And on behalf of the family, I just want to say thank you for making the effort on this Memorial Day to come to this service to honor uh, Pat's life. Thank you for being here. What a beautiful program, right? You have it in front of you. I'll refer to some words of the obituary later, but what a beautiful program you put together. It's, it's awesome. If I could remind you of just one housekeeping detail, you know those little things called phones? If you could put them on mute or or um, whatever, that, that would be very helpful. All right, thank you for doing that. Let's stand for an opening word of prayer in honor of the Lord today, in honor of, of uh, Pat's life. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that for your love and your grace and your mercy upon all of us. And we thank you that when we turn our hearts to you, Jesus Christ, we have everlasting and abundant life. We thank you for Pat's life and how she lived out her days with a lot of things, a lot of joy, a lot of power, a lot of love, a lot of life lessons that will never be forgotten. Thank you for every person here today that has come here to, to um, remember her life, but also that we turn our hearts to you, Jesus. Thank you for this family, this wonderful family, for all the grandkids and great-grandkids and, and uh, friends that are here and extended relatives. May you bless this service in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. You may be seated. And we're going to, first of all, uh, we're going to have two recorded videos of music that the family has, has um, selected. The first one was one of Pat's favorites, Celebrate Me Home.
picking that. Well, we're here to honor Pat's life, and, and we'll do that, and I'll talk about her life, and we'll have a time of open sharing if you want to share a story or a remembrance of her life, and we have a video tribute that's been put together by, by family and her brother. Um, but uh, first of all, we're here, and we need to think about our life, our life in relationship to God. Now, Pat's life uh, really allows us to talk about faith pretty easily because she knew Jesus Christ powerfully in her life, and uh, I'll talk about that later. But we need to look at our life in relationship to God, and I'm going to use some of the scriptures that were Pat's favorite scriptures that she loved to read. The first one is found in the Old Testament, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Um, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions to him for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's the famous verse, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Pat lived by that verse. It was one of her favorites, perhaps underlined in her Bible, the joy of the Lord. When you know Jesus Christ and you turn your heart to him daily, his joy sustains you, especially in a time like this. So what a remembrance that perhaps you're here and you've never turned your heart to the Lord. Maybe he's just kind of been a marginal concept in your mind. I know Pat at her service would want to have shared to turn your heart to Jesus Christ that you would have everlasting life, you would have the joy and the sustaining peace of Christ in your life. The next favorite verse that Pat lived by, and I'm going to read the entire psalm. It's very famous. Because when we come to a service like this, our hearts can be heavy. We think of our own life. We think of other loved ones in our life. Our our hearts can be heavy. If you've come here today with kind of a heavy heart, I don't blame you. Coming to a memorial service, a funeral service, not the easiest thing to do. But you know, when you turn to Christ, you've got peace. You've got strength that you didn't know you had. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now this was her favorite verse of this psalm. For even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a great promise. When you commit your life to Jesus Christ, you dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So on May 10th, when Pat left this earthly life, she stepped into glory, into the presence of the Lord. <laughs> wow, what did she behold? I know it's sad on this side of life, but what did she behold because of her faith in Jesus Christ? The reward of heaven. I turn to John chapter 3. Perhaps a verse that Pat knew from her growing up years. Very simple verse, perhaps the most famous verse in the entire Bible that everybody needs to hear. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in Jesus Christ should not perish but have everlasting life. What a great promise. God loves you. All you need to do is turn your heart to Christ and say, I believe in you. Now, that may not be all of Christianity, but it's certainly the first step to say, I believe in Jesus Christ. John 14, verse 1. 
Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. You know the way I, where I'm going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So you know, in life, people kind of say, well, as long as I believe in God, I'll be okay. Probably most Americans believe in God or a higher power or something. But Jesus said, you must believe in me. I am the only way to the Father. It's the commitment Jesus Christ that Pat lived out her entire life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 was another one of Pat's favorite verses where Paul said this. He cried out in the troubles of his life, but he received an answer from the Lord. It was one of Pat's favorite verses. My grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. I'm sure in Pat's life, just like in all of our lives, there are great times of weakness. We don't feel strong. We feel weak. What do I do? I'm sure she felt that way. I'm sure we all feel that way. We all have weaknesses. But when you turn your heart to Jesus Christ, you can understand his grace and say, my grace is... And his love, his grace, is sufficient for us in times of difficulty. It was one of Pat's favorite verses that she lived out. So we want to honor Jesus Christ. He's the reason why we're here. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die, but will live again. Pat made that commitment to Christ, probably at a very young age. And in the words of her family, they, she kind of drug them to church. Amen. She led her family to Christ. And I don't think there's any complaints from the family. No. No, she has a legacy. And they're all kind of sitting here. <laughs> you know what? In a, in, a, in a metaphorical sense, Pat is leading all of you to Jesus Christ, even at her memorial service. And I take that very seriously, that you hear the word of the Lord through her life, through this book, inspired book, through the Holy Spirit that says, perhaps Jesus Christ is knocking on the door of your life. Come back to me. Open up the door. Allow me to come in. So we want to honor the Lord, first of all. Morning. We have another video song that the family has selected. Spend all your time waiting for that second chance. Break. 
So tired of the straight line And everywhere you turn There's vultures and thieves at your back Stone keeps on twisting Keep on building lies That you make up for all that you lack Don't make no difference Escape one last time It's easier to believe In this sweet madness All this glorious sadness That brings me to my knees In the arms of the angel Fly away from here From this dark We are here to honor Pat's life, and, and I'm going to talk about her life, and uh, maybe a after I'm done, we'll have a, a brief time of open sharing. If you want to share something, I'll bring the microphone around, and then we have a video tribute of her life. I want to do a quick summary of her life, and then I'm going to break down her life into just different things that she enjoyed doing and her family. I know you've got a great program in front of you. You've probably read it already. It's a wonderful obituary and memories of her life. So in some senses, I'm going to repeat a little bit from, from that great uh, obituary written by the family. Pat was born in Colorado, the daughter of William and Ruby Willis. She was the eldest of five siblings. Well, as a, as a Growing In the growing up years, they moved around. There were some different stints in Kansas and elsewhere, but they settled in Montana, where she graduated from Nashua High School in 1969. She soon married her husband, Ronnie, and they settled in Roundup, where she lived for 35 years. And I'll talk about her work and career there in a moment, raising their young family, their young, perfect family, her two perfect sons, <laughs> and uh, well, I got a great story about them in a moment, <laughs> and of course her perfect daughter, and then she lived the, the, uh, the rest of her life as she retired from in Roundup, and she lived here in the Billings community for, for the last 12 years of her life. Some of you may be from Roundup, I don't know, I don't know everybody here. Some of you are from Affinity. Some of you are from her apartment complex in the Heights. So I just want to just want to welcome all of you here. I know some people from Roundup were saying that they were going to try to be here today. Well, first of all, her work life and her career. So the first thing about her career was raising her family, taking care of her husband, and raising. 
her wonderful family, which was a full-time job, I'm sure, every day. But early in, 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 as a young married, her and her husband, Ronnie, were hired by the Corps of Engineers, and so they did a lot of work at the Fort Peck Dam. And whether it was mowing grass, whether it was picking up garbage, general maintenance, general landscaping, whatever it was. And I'm sure there were other jobs in there. I think in the obituary it talks about her being a waitress and a maid, et cetera. But, but she was worked with her husband in the landscaping world at Fort Peck. And so the family says that she was trained to notice garbage. <laughs> So they'd be traveling, and she would just notice garbage and pick it up because she, she just had that skill set and that, the eye for that. She probably noticed in different places where she would go, the grass isn't cut, or it's not a certain height, probably. But she, uh, that was part of an early work career. And then, perhaps the most enjoyable out-of-the-house job that she had was working at First Security Bank in Roundup for many, many years. She started as a drive-through teller, then, then a, a main teller in the, uh, inside the bank, and then she was a loan processor. She was skilled for that. I, I think in the obituary, it was a job where she quit twice and then she went back the third time knowing that they probably wouldn't fire her again. No, she wasn't fired, but that she wouldn't quit again. So um, she loved that family was really commenting on that. She loved her job with the bank. She, had, she was skilled to work with numbers. But I don't think it was just that. She loved people. And she loved the success of, of, of a loan or perhaps exchanging a money, whatever it was, of just helping people. She probably enjoyed the camaraderie of the colleagues inside the bank walls. She probably just loved the people of Roundup she was serving on a daily basis. So she may have quit to go to work somewhere else, and that was the, the loss of the bank. But then she went back, and so they were very blessed to have her all of those years. Well, she had many hobbies in life, many hobbies. Too many to mention here today, but I will mention some. One of the things that I learned about Pat is she loved to go to movies, especially Guardian of the Galaxy and, and Disney movies. And there was something unique about Pat is she would go to movies, she would laugh the loudest and scream the loudest um, and so forth and, and, uh, and the buttered popcorn and whatever. And, she, and I think on your program there's a picture of Groot from, from Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. But she loved, she loved watching movies with her grandkids and that was just a pastime. That was just a, a great thing. She loved nature. Now, a lot of things of nature always grabbed her attention. Of course, being in Montana, we've, we've got that beautiful landscape and all kinds of things uh, in our state. But she loved hummingbirds. Hummingbirds were, her, were one of her favorites, and she loved lilacs. And you've noticed the lilacs here and, and on the urn, the lilacs. She just loved lilacs. So... She loved shopping. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but I think that if somebody wanted something, she would probably just give it to them, and then she would go online and buy something for herself. But she loved shopping. She was very organized, whether it was her filing system, whether there's a scrapbook right on the end of the pew there that I look through. And pictures from way back, beautiful. She organized that. She's, you probably have gone through tons of stuff that she organized. But she loved to do it. Was just, she was very skilled that way. Beautiful scrapbook of extended family pictures. But not just pictures. She would write things. She would write things about who they were and what they did. It's beautiful. Um, maybe we'll take it up to the reception. She loved traveling. She did her share of traveling, whether it's the Grand Canyon, Mount Rushmore, museums. And then there was the infamous trip to Alaska where she wanted to see the whales. And, but on that particular day, the rough waters 
the food that was cooking on the boat, you know where I'm going with this, where, where Pat was kind of hanging on the side of the boat for most of the trip. But I, I can't remember who it was, but the whales came by and they lifted up her head and she did see the whales on that day. I don't know who that was. Uh, okay, okay, all right. The next attribute of her life, I, I wouldn't call it a hobby, but the next wonderful attribute of life was you. She loved people. Now, I'll talk about her family later, but it was you. She loved to serve people. She loved people. She loved to find their interests in life and ask you questions. I felt that as a pastor. When I hadn't seen her for a while, she came up to me and she goes, remember me? I think it was after COVID. Oh, yeah, Pat, I remember you. And She kind of had recovered from cancer and and, and I think that's how she just kind of got involved in people's life. But you're here because in some way, whether you're related or not, um, she connected with you. She had that marvelous gift of connecting in churches, in, in living places, wherever, in the community of Roundup, community of buildings. She was just loving, encouraging, and she showed great interest in you through conversation, through laughter, through whatever. She was a fighter. She had a determined, persevering spirit to go through her cancer battles and whatever, and even as she fell, she was fighting until the end, opening her eyes in the hospital room and just fighting for that ounce of life. But I guess it was her time that uh, God was calling her home. Family. Even though she loved people, she loved her friends, she loved her brothers and sisters in Christ in churches, and that was very important to her. So I'll talk about that in a moment, but perhaps none could compare to her family, her children. I don't think she knew the meaning of the word in-law, <laughs> right? You were daughters, you were her, her extra son. There was a quick story of the growing up years where her dad was a pilot and told her the tall tale of how she, uh, of how he landed an airplane in a grain silo. And she went to school telling that story and she got in trouble for that, uh, some of those growing up years. And there's another story I won't go into, but you can ask the family about her dad having his tonsils out, and she told that story in school. You can ask the sons about that story. That's a cute story. Okay. It wasn't about tonsils. <laughs> Family knows what I'm talking That was a great story. As a mom, first of all, as a wife, faithful wife, her wife, as a mom, she was there for your activity, your game, football games, your basketball games, whatever you did. She was there for your singing contests. She was just present with you. She never left you, nor forsook you. She was there with you. All the Christmases, the Easter's, the birthdays, the birth of her grandkids, all the pictures in that scrapbook tell it all. She was just there as a faithful mom, as a grandmother, the greatest story of all, and uh, I think I have permission, Randy and Ronnie, to tell this, and if I don't, I'm in trouble. Well, as they were growing up, they, were, they got into a heated fight in the living room, and they were going at it. Well, Pat got in the middle of them, great peacemaker. Well, she calmed them down, but you know what those two boys did? One grabbed her by the armpits and one grabbed her by the legs and they took her outside and threw her in a snowbank. I loved it. I loved it. And she loved it. She loved it. I can only see her laughing about that. I thought that was a great story. There was the famous, was she at your place when she found the Levite rock? Yeah, she was at your place when she... Oh, she was in Roundup, and, um, 
and uh, one of you said, yeah, that's a famous Leverite rock, and she was really excited. She found a Leverite rock. And then she asked, what's a Leverite rock? To which one of you said, leave it right there. <laughs> and, and, and her favorite expression was, oh, poop. That's on your obituary. You just had a lot of fun with her as family. She was, I, I, I know she had her serious moments too, but you had a lot of fun with her. And there's a lot of memories, kids and grandkids, that you have locked away, stored away in your heart and your mind that will never leave you. We just don't have time today to go into all those, but they're powerful. I got a kick, at, I, I've not named all of you as grandkids or great-grandkids, but I got a kick out of to the eight grandkids that she would always give a piece of fruit and a toothbrush on Christmas. What was the fruit? An apple, an orange, I anything. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I got to make mental note of that. I, those are great gifts to grandkids. All right. Just her family, both her growing up family and her present family. Perhaps the final theme of her life that I want to talk about today was her faith in Jesus Christ, where she came to know Christ. And we never talked about that, but I just assume at a very early age growing up, where she went to church, church was always important to her. She went to church, and you remember her as a young mother dragging you across the alley to the community church at Fort Peck, <laughs> dragging you. I don't think she drug you, but anyway, yeah, we get the picture. I get that. Um, but just her faith in Jesus Christ was very powerful through the years. I just want to talk about some ways that her, her life in Christ was lived out. First of all, in her love for the Word of God. The favorite scriptures that I read, but she had a lot more favorite scriptures that she read from and got strength from Another way that she lived out her faith is in her prayer life. My hunch is, especially for you as family, things worked out for you because you had somebody in your corner praying for you. I'm convinced of that. She was praying for you. Another great way that she expressed her faith was through song. When I called Pastor Jason in Roundup and and uh, just informed him, because I knew she had roots in, at the Roundup Emmanuel Baptist Church. And, and his first comment was, when he first came there several years ago, he remembered her singing on the worship team. I didn't, I didn't know that. And, and you see the red flag here. Um, if you go on our Facebook page, Easter Sunday, March 31st, you'll see Pat dancing, well, kind of dancing, but she was waving a red flag. She was about right there on Easter Sunday morning. She had that red flag. We just took the stick out of it, I thought. And she was waving it to the glory of God. And, and that was so powerful. I saw some of it, but I was just focused elsewhere. But she was waving this flag to her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's the flag that she wore. And I think that was the last Sunday she was here, right? Easter Sunday. Yeah, that's powerful. And there's the picture of her right there. You can't, I know you can't see it, but it's right there. It's, it's from our Facebook page. Thank you for getting that still picture and, and whoever did that. It's beautiful. What a testimony. When I, when I shared with a couple of people that Pat had, had gone to glory, and that's my phrase. I know she died. I know we use that phrase, but she stepped into glory. That was the first thing somebody texted me that they remembered, her waving this flag to the glory of God. So she expressed her faith in that way. And she expressed her faith 
to her commitment to the local church. Obviously, as a pastor of a church, I believe in the local church. In, in, in a culture today where people say, well, I know Christ, but I don't do church anymore. That was never Pat Mosman. The church in Roundup, the church in Fort Peck, this church was very important to her because she loved the people of God and she drew strength from people and I think she gave strength to people as she came to church. And then I've already mentioned, and this is where I'm going to finish, she led her family to Christ. And so in a very metaphorical way, as you've come to this service, she's leading you to Christ uh, today. If only you'd recognize that and say, yeah, I need Christ in my life, or I need to come back to Christ and commit my life to him. Those are my comments in honor of Pat Mosman. Thank you, family, for sharing more than I knew. I really appreciate all that you shared in our time together uh, the other day. We're going to shift. Um, i got to make sure I do this right here. Uh, we're going to have a time of open sharing. I know it's kind of hard because I've just shared some comments and you probably aren't um, in a mood right now to share some of your sort of processing, but maybe you have a story, an anecdote from where you knew Pat, I'll just bring the handheld mic to you. It doesn't have to be long, and then we'll have our video tribute of Pat's life. So all it takes is just one person to kind of start. Maybe there's a grandchild, maybe there's family member, um, or just anybody here who would like to share. Don't be shy. And if there's nobody, that's fine, too. Yeah, I'm going to get this person right here. Did you want to share? Yeah, all right. Um, I just wanted to say, I think the greatest thing about Pat was um, she never had to t have her right hand tell her left hand what was going on. And by that, I mean many times I'd come out on the property and I'd say, oh, my gosh, the puzzle room's all picked up. And somebody would say, oh, Pat did it. Or... I'd say, oh my gosh, I wonder who cleaned the garbage up last night. And somebody else would say, oh, Pat did it. She never felt like she had to come down and say, guess what I did last night, or tell everybody. She just had a really quiet way of just doing her part. Yes, good word, very good word. Yep. Okay. Anyway, uh, this is my wife, and uh, the first time we met Pat, we were moving in, and we were moving our groceries upstairs, but we didn't have anything really to move it with. And she came, she came by, and she said we could use her cart to move our groceries. So she let us use her cart. And then uh, every time I see, we used to see her, in, like in the lunchroom or in the in the puzzle room, she'd come up and she'd ask me, "Hey Phil, can I hug you?" And I go, "Yeah, you can hug me." And she used to always give me a big hug every time, and she'd do that to my wife also. And she was she was really something else. And I'd always see her off my balcony because I lived on the second floor, and I'd be standing out there and I could see her walking, and she'd be throwing her garbage, and then I'd see her, and then she'd look up at me and she'd say hello, and you know we talked to her for a while. She was she was quite an awesome woman. I re we really miss her. She was awesome. She really was. I have to say this about Pat. We were very good friends with each other. But the funniest thing, when she came to visit me out at Affinity, after she lost all of her hair from chemo, uh, one of her kids took her to the, what is that place where you get secondhand stuff? Anyway, where? No, anyway, what she did, if they did, was picked out a green wig and she came to affinity in her green wig giggling 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 she was a lot of fun but she never left me without saying Millie I love you good 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 all right thank you for sharing it's awesome stories um, 
Anybody else? I can walk around. Oh, Jesus. There was uh, one of the many times we were prepping food at her house. I was peeling potatoes. And uh, <sighs> sorry, are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> she was telling me in the older days when she was growing up, she was looking at my potato peels and she's like, my dad would make me repeal these skins because there's too much potato left on these. <laughs> and so uh, now even today when I'm peeling potatoes, I look at that and I'm like, that's too much potato left on that skin. <laughs> good job. Good job. That's good. That's really good. Anybody else? I just want to say thank you. Oh, you want to share? Yeah, let's share. Anybody who knew Nana Pat, she was probably the most gentlest woman on the faith, face of this earth, you know. Never would yell at us, never would get after us. Um, but there was one time Brennan and I were at Nana's house visiting and Roundup, and I remember biting him. You don't bite around Nana Pat. <laughs> it was the first time she ever got after me, and she's like, you see my teeth? I will bite you back. We don't bite. And it was the only time she ever got after me, but I remember that vividly because it's the only time she would ever get after us is if we bit somebody, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate. Thank you for sharing. They mean a lot. It means a lot to the family. Well, let's go into the video presentation of
I'd like you to take your hymnal in front of you. We don't need to put them on the screen, Bob. Um, hymnal number 107, Amazing Grace. Families requested we sing this. Let's stand as we sing. We're going to sing verses 1, 3, and 5. Number 107. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. When we've been there, Ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. I'm going to have a closing word of prayer. Randy's going to lead the family out upstairs. You're all invited to the luncheon. If you need some elevator help, I understand that. I'll help you with that. It's in the main hallway. You go right around the corner, up the stairs, down the hallway, and you'll, you'll finally hit our fellowship hall. <laughs> uh, just follow the family. We have a wonderful luncheon prepared. Thank you, family, for bringing all kinds of stuff. Our church has provided stuff. Just to have a few moments of gathering together, enjoying a meal. Let's pray. We pause before you, Lord, before we go into a time of fellowshipping and eating, and we need to do that. We pause before you. Somebody here needs to say, yes, Lord, I need to know you. In that silence, or I need to recommit my life to you. I need to thank you for eternal life. I need to feel your peace right now. Thank you for your presence here through past life messages today through your word through song we thank you for past life as a mom as a mother-in-law as a grandmother as a great-grandmother as a friend as a sister we just thank you for her life all that she meant and the things that will never be forgotten her life will never be forgotten. Obviously, her name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, so <laughs> you didn't forget her. Man, she just stepped into glory. We thank you for her life on earth as it was lived out through trials, through joys, through these wonderful pictures of family and friends. Thank you. Thank you for these moments today of remembering and honoring her life of Patmos. Thank you, Jesus, for her life. In your precious name, may you grace people as they go in into this luncheon and fellowship time. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, if you remain standing, Randy will just lead the family.